This is Pocket Watching with JT, the call-in financial talk show focused on helping you get your money right. Jason Thornton is a certified financial planner licensed in both tax and investments. Now, this is not personal financial advice. This is JT's real reaction to all your money and business questions. Are you deep in debt, living paycheck to paycheck, and looking for a way out? Call Pocket Watching with JT, the financial advisor for the people. Need more? Book your personal consultation with my man JT at pocketwatcher.net. Now, let's go pocket watching. Hey, Pocket Watchers, welcome to Pocket Watching with JT. I am certified financial planner, Jason Thornton. I am a financial advisor that specializes in tax and wealth planning for my clients. But on YouTube, I react to scammer news and your money questions. So before I get started tonight, I want to give a big shout out to each and every one of the Pocket Watchers out there. Listen, last month, Pocket Watching with JT did over 1.1 million views, and it's all because of you guys. So I want to say thank you. I appreciate it. As you make your way into the live stream, make sure you hit that like button. Share the content, please, and subscribe if you have not subscribed already. All right. All right. Let's get straight into it. I'm not going to hold you guys long. We're going to get straight into it. This is what we're talking about tonight. Tonight, we are talking about a government informant. Now, you got to give me a second to explain the whole story. But as I go through the story, you will understand what's going on. So give me a minute and let me explain the story. I'm not going to hold you. I'm going to show you exactly who it is right here, right now. So drum roll, please. The government informant apparently is the richest black man in America, Robert F who apparently is also headlining Earn Your Leisure's 2023 Invest Fest. Now, listen, I, I, I know what's going on in your minds right now. You're thinking, JT, you lost your mind. You're so focused on trying to find grifters that now you are looking at the richest black man in America and you're falsely claiming he's a government informant. Listen, calm down, give me a minute to explain, and you'll get it. Now, many of you may not even know who this man is, because honestly, it wasn't until somewhat recently that he really started to hit the news waves and people understand who this guy is. So let me show you guys this video to refresh your memories of who he is. the chairperson and founder of Vista Equity Partners, LLC. This firm invests exclusively in tech companies and has $96 billion in assets. Robert is the wealthiest black person in the United States with a net worth of more than $11 billion, according to Bloomberg. Smith is also a noted philanthropist. In 2019, he famously paid off the debt of Morehouse College's graduating class. On behalf of the eight generations of my family who have been in this country we're going to put a little fuel in your bus now i've got the alumni over there and this is a challenge to you alumni this is my class 2019. and my family is making a grant to eliminate their student loans Smith is the wealthiest African-American in the United States. Uh, He is the only African-American to sign the giving pledge. He's a former Goldman Sachs uh, guy, private equity now, uh, Vista Partners, and just a remarkable success story. All right, all right, so listen. 
let me start off by saying this. Robert F. Smith is unlike anyone else I have ever covered on this channel. Robert F. Smith is in no way a fake guru. Robert F. Smith is the real deal. Let me show you guys something. Let me show you guys something. Robert F. Smith is extremely accomplished. He is a billionaire fund manager. This man has an Ivy League education. All right? No hate on him on that. This man has achieved the wealth that most people dream of but will never achieve. All right? It's just that he's also apparently a government informant. And let me explain how we get to this story. All right? Let's let just follow me. Follow me. So Robert F. Smith, he is the manager of an investment fund that specializes in investing in tech companies. The question you should be asking yourself is, how did that happen? How did he become the fund manager of a billion dollar, multi-billion dollar investment fund that specializes in tech companies? All right, here we go. I want you to pay attention to this man right here. This is Robert Brockman. Robert Brockman is a billionaire from Texas. All right, billionaire from Texas. This man made his billions by selling software to car dealerships. Made his billions. Now, this is the man right here, Robert Brockman. This is the man who started Robert's fund with $1 billion. So he put the seed money in Robert F. Smith's hands to start the fund. Now, when he handed over the check, here's the problem. When Robert Brockman handed over the multiple millions all the way up to a billion dollars, when he handed that check over to Robert Smith, that money came it came with some strings attached. And, and, and here's the problem. There's going to become a point in your life when someone's going to offer you an amazing deal. It looks as if they are going to basically hand deliver all your dreams. Most of the time, it's going to come with some strings attached. So I just want you to be aware that anyone can get got in this type of situation. When someone's willing to give you everything that it looks like you want, you need to be a little skeptical because it could get you in trouble. So here we go. Let me show you guys what ended up happening. Now, what I'm reading from right here, what I'm reading from is from the Justice Department's statements on what they say happened in this situation, all right? If you look at the second paragraph, it says that beginning in or about 1997, while working as an investment banker at a leading global investment bank, I believe they're referring to Goldman Sachs. That's where Robert F. Smith was working at the time. Smith met and developed a business relationship with individual A. I believe this is Robert Brockman. He was the, at the time, he's the CEO of that company that sold software to car dealerships. Now, between 1997 and 1998, it was Robert Smith, right? Robert Smith's job was to help Robert Brockman tried to sell his company. Robert Smith at the time, he's the expert in tech companies for Goldman Sachs. That's why they paired Robert Smith with Robert Brockman. Paired them together because 
He's the go-to guy when it comes to tech companies. Now, over this time where they're trying to sell the company, the deal falls through, right? Ultimately, Robert Brockman did not sell his company in this deal. But here's the thing. Over this two-year period, Robert Smith really impresses Robert Brockman. I mean, he really impresses him all the way to the point where Brockman, the white billionaire from Texas, goes to Robert F. Smith, the black investment banker with Goldman Sachs. He goes to Smith and says, I'm so impressed by you, even though the deal didn't close. I'm so impressed by you. I want you to quit your job. Stop working for Goldman Sachs. Start your own investment firm. And I'm Robert Brockman. I'm going to give you a billion dollars to start the firm. Dreams come true, right? Dreams come true. Amazing situation. Here's the catch. Robert Brockman, the white billionaire from Texas, tells Robert Smith, the black man investment banker from Goldman Sachs, he tells him, but listen, you have to put half of your management fee that you take from the firm, you have to put it in an offshore foreign trust because that's what I do with my money. This is Robert Brockman, the white billionaire. He says he has his money in an offshore foreign trust. That way he does not have to pay tax. If I give you this $1 billion, you have to put half of your management fee that you're going to be earning from the firm, from the investment firm you're going to start. I want you to put it in a foreign trust. Matter of fact, I'm going to have the same lawyer that drew up my foreign trust. He's going to do your foreign trust. It's all, it, listen, I know it sounds crazy, but it's all in the paperwork. It's all right here. Now, at this point, Robert F. Smith, he's got a decision to make. Does he accept the money, start the firm, but he also knows he's hiding money in a foreign trust? Or does he decline, say no thank you, and try to start the firm anyway, but he's going to have to go around raising money amongst a bunch of different investors? Apparently, based on this statement of fact from the U.S. Department of Justice, Robert F. Smith decided to take the money from Robert Brockman and open up the foreign trust. All right, here we go. Here's where it gets... Uh, Here's where it gets kind of bad for him. The issue here is that in order to open the trust, okay, he's going to have to open the trust in a name of someone that's not his, right? He wants someone else's name on the trust. Who do you think he would go to in this situation? Who would he go to to put their name on this foreign trust that's going to have multiple, I mean, multiple of millions of dollars in this trust? I mean, there's so many people you can think of. Ultimately, he decides to put the trust in the name of his wife's uncle. Follow me here. Follow me here. He puts it in his wife's uncle's name. His wife's uncle is a Jamaican living in the UK. So there's enough distance from himself that he feels like he's pretty safe. Now, he made many, many good decisions investing the money. I mean, a lot of great decision when it comes to investing this money. Professionally, Robert F. Smith is probably one of the best decision makers 
deal makers there are. But see, that's professionally. Personally, personally, he did not make a lot of good decisions. And here's why. When you go through the documents, I have here a uh, a filing with the court that at one point it was sealed. You'll see right here where it says sealed, but the government unsealed it. I don't have anything special. You can find this document online yourself. But this document here, at one point it was sealed, but then at another point, the government unsealed it. And when you go through this document, you will find out that Robert F. Smith had a very messy divorce around 2014 through 2015. He had a really bad divorce. And dealing with this divorce, some things kind of came out. He was originally married to this beautiful Black woman, Suzanne. They were married in 1988. This is long before he was a billionaire. I believe he graduated in 1985. So she was there since day one. Suzanne is beautiful. He was married to Suzanne, but for whatever reason, Suzanne was suspecting that Robert could be cheating on her. So what does Suzanne do? Suzanne decides to hire a private investigator. Listen, I, this story would not be more amazing if I made it up. I want y'all to pay attention. Suzanne hires a private investigator. And this private investigator finds out that Robert F. Smith had a girlfriend. And... Robert had set up and had the business pay for the girlfriend's expenses. He also had the business, made it look like the business paid for and rented out this New York City, you know, apartment, paid for all of her expenses, like lavish stuff. All of this information actually comes out, right? This information comes out during the divorce. That's how the IRS got the information. He was disguising paying for his girlfriend's living expenses as if it was a business expense. That's how I read these documents. Now, they got divorced in 2014. Married in 1988, divorced in 2014. One year later, he marries Hope, right? He marries Hope. Now, a little fun fact, most of you may not be aware of this, but Hope was actually a Playboy model. Not any Playboy model. No, not just simply any old Playboy model, she was the 2010 Playmate of the Year. I, I, I think this is a very uh, prestigious award. You can see here, she got her award from Hugh Hefner himself before he passed, obviously. Now, I do want to warn you, if you guys Google her name, make sure you Google her name with the safe mode on. I accidentally Googled her name with safe mode off. You will find some explicit content. Don't, listen, save yourself the headache. If you Google this woman's name, make sure safe mode is on. You'll be surprised what you'll see if you don't. Now, listen, I am not, and I will never pretend to be, a big city billionaire fund manager. That's not me. I will never be that accomplished as an investor. It's not going to happen. I'm just a humble, small city financial advisor. But I will tell you this. Here's a few free financial tips. 
if you have a pen and paper by you, make sure you take some notes. Here we go. Tip number one, never try to hide money from the IRS. It normally does not turn out good. That's tip number one. Tip number two, if you ignore tip number one and you decide to hide money from the IRS, don't involve your wife in the deal. It can just get messy, all right? Tip number three, if you decide to hide money from the IRS and you decide to involve your wife, don't cheat on your wife. It's not going to turn out good for you. And here's my last tip. If you ignored everything that I said before this, if you still decide you're going to hide money from the IRS, multiples of millions of dollars, you're going to hide money from the IRS, you're going to involve your wife, and you decide to cheat on your wife. Please do me this last favor. Please do not cheat on your black wife who has been with you since day one with a white Playboy model. That never turns out good. Trust me. Trust me, please. That never turns out good. Don't cheat on your black wife with the white Playboy model. It's not going to turn out good. All right, now back, back to the story. Back to the story. All right, so after the divorce and the information comes out, the IRS actually cites, cites the information from the private investigator in the case. Now, you should be asking yourself this question. If Robert F. Smith is guilty of hiding multiples of millions of dollars from the IRS, why is he still walking around the streets? He should be in jail. No, listen, I got you. Well, Robert was able to get a deal with the government. There was a couple of things he had to do to make sure that he did not go to jail. Now, number one, he had to pay the $139 million of taxes that he avoided. Number two, he had to revoke his claim for a $182 million tax refund. Now, let me explain this a little bit. Robert was making donations after he found out that he was being investigated by the government. After he found out he was being investigated by the government, he started to become very charitable based on the reports that I got. And as he was making these donations, he wanted a tax deduction like any US citizen would. So to make this deal, he had to pay the $139 million in back taxes and he also had to revoke his request for a $182 million refund. All right, so that was number two. And number three, number three, he had to agree to be an informant and cooperate with the government. Now, against who? Who is he cooperating against? Robert Brockman. Remember the white billionaire from Texas? who made Robert F. Smith a billionaire? I mean, uh, let's be real. Robert F. Smith would be an extremely successful person if it was not for uh, Brockman. If Brockman never entered his life, Robert F. Smith would still be extremely successful. He would probably be a multi-millionaire still. But billionaire? Richest black man in America? Without starting a firm, if you read the government's paperwork, you will see that it was actually Brockman's idea for Smith to open the fund in the first place and then gave him one billion dollars to do it. So to keep himself out of jail, based on what I'm reading, he decided to snitch on Brockman. 
the man who the man who who set him up in the first place so okay the government then does the biggest tax evasion case in the history of the country against Robert Brockman. They claim that he avoided $2 billion. It was a $2 billion tax evasion case against Brockman. And the star witness was going to be Robert F. Smith. Robert F. Smith, in my, in my imagination, would be sitting down in court at the witness stand pointing at the man <laughs> who made him a billionaire, he's going to help send that man to jail. All right. Now, what happened? While Robert F. Smith has made some bad personal choices in his life, he did get really lucky lately. This is what happened. Based on what I'm reading, he was going to have to testify, it looks like, against the man who helped be, make him a billionaire. But Robert Brockman dies before the court case. So Robert Brockman dies. He doesn't have to testify. Robert F. Smith is never seen in court pointing at his benefactor, pointing at the white billionaire from Texas who gave him the idea to start the firm, who gave him the seed money to start the firm, Robert F. Smith never has to point out in court and be an informant so everyone can see because Brockman dies. So the government says, hold on. We still got you on the hook. You're our boy now. So we're going to do another case. We're going to call up the lawyer who set up Brockman's trust and he set up your trust. We're going to have you sit in court and point at the lawyer so we can put the lawyer in jail. Guess what happens to the lawyer? The lawyer deletes himself before the case. So now the lawyer's dead. So once again, Robert F. Smith does not have to sit in a courtroom pointing out one of the people who he worked with to be able to, you know, avoid jail time himself. So that brings us to this. When I started this video, I showed you how Robert F. Smith paid for the student loan debt of Morehouse class of 2019. Not only did he pay for class of 2019's student loans, he challenged the alumni, other people, to do what he was doing, to help the way that he was helping. Here's my issue with that. My issue with his challenge and the way that he did it is this right here. This is the letter are part of the letter that Robert F. Smith wrote to the investors of his fund after he made his agreement with the government. And in this letter, he explains that the money that he had in the foreign trust, that was the money that he used to make the donations. <laughs> All right, let me say that a little slower so you understand. The money that Robert F. Smith used to pay Morehouse class of 2019 student loan debt, that money did not come from his bank account. It didn't come from a legitimate source. He used the foreign trust with the money that he never reported as his income to pay and make all the charitable donations he's been making. So Robert F. Smith, listen, thank you for the donation. I love the fact that you did it, but how can you challenge the alumni of Morehouse or any other HBCU to do something like you did? We don't have millions of dollars in an offshore trust that we never paid taxes on in the first place. 
we also didn't have a white billionaire to fund us to become a billion dollar hedge fund manager. So, I mean, listen, this is pocket watching with JT. I do not personally have an issue with you being a snitch. But the audience that you're trying to court now, you know, after you mess up with white folks, normally we move over to our community and we try to get good with our own community. The audience you're trying to court, they don't like snitches. I can tell you right now, the earn your leisure audience, they are not fan of snitches. And you, sir, it looks as if you're a snitch. Now, I want you guys to ask yourself this question. If he was supposed to snitch on Brockman, but Brockman died before the court case can go, then the government pointed him at the lawyer, but the lawyer deletes himself before the case can go on. It seems to me like Robert F. Smith is still on the hook to snitch on somebody. See, when the government pays for you, right? When the government has their hook on you, they want something in return. Could Robert F. Smith still be looking for someone to snitch on? I don't know. See, I don't know these things. I'm just a humble country financial advisor. I'm not a big city billion dollar hedge fund manager. But it makes me ask the question, why all of a sudden is Robert F. Smith getting real close and buddy-buddy with the black community? None of us heard of him prior to him doing his big donations. And many reports that I read said that he only started doing the donations when he knew he was under investigation from the government. And the money from the donations, the, the source of the donations was actually the money that you had hid in the foreign trust, apparently. So it just makes me ask the question, why all of a sudden are you getting buddy-buddy with the black hip-hop crowd of Earn Your Leisure? I'm just throwing out guesses, but I will say this. If you plan on going to Invest Fest this year to hear the headliner, uh, Robert F. Smith, and if you haven't decided on what your outfit's going to be, let me suggest you go to pocketwatcher.net. Get yourself one of these misdemeanors over felony t-shirts and show your support to a billion dollar government informant. Now, I will say this. Brockman, no longer alive. He couldn't snitch on him in open court. The lawyer, no longer alive. He could not snitch on him in open court. So uh, if you go to Invest Fest, or if you're around Mr. Smith, be careful on what you say. He might have, might have a mic on him, might have a wire. I don't, listen, I don't know. All I know is when the government wants you to snitch on somebody and the first one dies, then the second one dies, you still have a debt to pay. All right, listen, I just want to give a shout out to each and every one of y'all who came on this live stream. Uh, if you would like to see my notes on my research here, I will be giving a link on my community tab with all my notes from tonight's show. And if uh, Robert Smith or any of your attorneys, if you would like to uh, fill me in on where I possibly said something wrong, feel free to give me an email, pocketwatcherjt at gmail.com. But I just want to show you something real quick to make sure that we're on the same page. Almost all of the information that I got from tonight's show came from this agreement. This is a non-prosecution agreement. You signed it. So I'm assuming all of this information is correct because you signed it. Not only did you sign it, but one, two, three, four, five attorneys representing you also signed 
this non-prosecution agreement, along with an assistant attorney general. And 99% of the stuff that I said tonight comes from this agreement that you signed. But still, if I said something wrong, if my opinion and reaction to this information is inaccurate in any way, Mr. Smith, and your five attorneys are probably 20, 50 attorneys, shoot me an email, pocketwatcherjt at gmail.com. I'll be happy to hear what you have to say. So I want to say thank you to each and every one of y'all tonight. This was a special episode. We still will be doing our episode tomorrow, live stream on Friday nights. I want you all to be good, have fun, and uh, the Pocket Watcher is, is out. The Pocket Watcher is out. Y'all have a great night. Do your thing. Hey, Pocket Watchers, are you looking for real financial advice? Thornton Advisor Group is here to help. Jason Thornton, certified financial planner, specializes in tax and wealth planning. Are you living paycheck to paycheck with no retirement plan? Do you need help with the IRS? Book your consultation with Thornton Advisor Group to get a financial plan, budgeting, savings, debt management, tax planning, investing, and retirement, even IRS debt settlements. Stop trying to run the play. Get the advice you need to live your best life from a certified financial planner. Book your consultation appointment today. Go to www.thorntonadvisor.com.